Welcome, welcome, welcome to a bonus episode of I Said What I Said, Don't At Me. And today I'm trying to do this new thing, trying to uh, record the video of me doing the podcast. That way I should be able to edit and uh, share the video of me doing this on YouTube while doing it live on Facebook as well. Uh, I didn't advertise it. I just threw it up there. We'll see who jumps in. It's kind of the middle of the day. Hopefully I get a little bit more uh, participation in this. I'll say that. But the reason I'm doing this, uh, it's not going to be a long episode. Just want to keep everybody in the loop. I just I had such a great day yesterday from uh, wake up to bedtime. I could not complain about yesterday. Yesterday was a pretty awesome day. Uh, I'll say that because it started with me um, going to watch my Carolina Panthers play in uh, State Farm Stadium right down the street. And I was going into that game with some doubts. Um, I was going into that game with some fears. Uh, first one is I, I was unaware how well fans of the Panthers travel. I thought there was probably about to be in that whole stadium hundred maybe 200 of us or something like that but there was a a grip of us out there man like when I parked the car to start the walk to the stadium um I was shocked there was mobs of Panthers fans not as much as Cardinal fans but I was I was pleasantly surprised I I I had comfort that I was not going to be the only dude in there turning up whenever we made a great play second part of that was I wasn't sure how many great plays we would make um, our defensive line was kind of hurt. We had some defensive line starters that were out. Um, obviously, Cam was out. Uh, we have not looked well all season. And the fact that now the key components to who I thought were supposed to be good were out of the game. And so, I mean, it was just a perfect storm of I thought we were not going to do well that game, right? So... That was uh, step one. Step two, um, walking to the stadium, there were so many side hustles going on. Like, people were trying to sell me bottled Aquafina, like the regular, like you can buy a case of them at Sam's Club for like three bucks, 35. They're selling them for like three, four bucks, right? And the reasoning is because you can take an unopened bottle of water, unopened bottle of water into the game. And they would not, you know, take it away. However, if you wait until you get to the stadium to try to buy water, they're charging you like five, six bucks for the same water, right? So it's a good hustle, but it's just like, nah, I'm cool, man. Like, it's a shame this is how you make your money. Or I don't know if this is your side hustle or whatnot, but, um, you know, do you. I'm not buying no water because I'll just wait to go in there and, and get me a beer or whatnot. So anyway, um, I go in there. And if you haven't watched Sports Center, if you haven't, uh, check the news or anything like that. Like Carolina won, right? I did a live video of my my raw emotions coming from that game. It's on a, my Facebook Live, uh, but it's on my personal Facebook Live. So I thought I'd share this on the podcast so those who don't follow me personally can understand how turned up I was. And I was all the way turned up in that game. It didn't start out that way because our first possession, uh, Kyle Allen, our backup quarterback who was starting because Cam is hurt, Drove us down the field and then got sacked, fumbled, and the Cardinals picked it up, and that stadium was ridiculous, right? Just, like, I was just like, here we go. Like, why why would this not happen to Carolina? Because everything else is happening to us, right? So we're sitting there, and they, they drive down the field. Cardinals come down the field. Uh, Kyler Murray, uh, their quarterback, who they're all hyped up about, uh, just goes down the field, escapes sacks, scrambles, picks up like 17 yards on a carry, and third and one at the goal, third third end goal, uh, they throw that screen pass to Larry. He gets in, they score first, right? So we have a chance to score on our first drive. We don't. We turn it over, they go down the field, score, and I'm like, all right, now we're behind the ball, right? And if you've been watching uh, Carolina, we haven't been real good at playing from behind, right? We really don't have a good passing attack, Um our run game, like everybody knows, CMC's getting a ball, so they stack the box or they have somebody spying on them. So it's not a good look. But um, I was shocked. Uh, Kyle Allen drove us down the field, hit Curtis Samuel on an out route, 
And it was one of those throws where I was like, Cam would not have made that throw. Cam would not have made that throw. And I, I was feeling, you know, I, I got excited. I didn't get too excited. You know, I didn't want to show out too early. Um, and then, you know, they, Cardinals come back down. I think we trade some punts. They kick a field goal. Uh, Kyle drives us back down the field uh, under two minutes. Hits DJ Moore on a like a, uh, it's probably no more than probably about 15 yard pass. He catches it with room to run and ends up running and, and scoring from 30 yards out that way. And I'm just like, huh, Cam would not have made that throw either, right? So now I'm like super excited. You know, I'm, 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 I'm about to, like, I'm on the verge of being ignorant, but not yet because I know it's a lot of football left and a lot of stupid things can happen. So uh, aside from that, uh, you know, Cardinals come down. Uh, they kick a field goal. Um, they get the ball back. They score. And, you know, like, it, it's starting, like, second half, I'm just like, well, here's where we fall apart. But every time my man got the ball, we scored. And he was just, the passes he was making, Cam could not have made those passes. Christian McCaffrey had that 76-yard run. I was I was ecstatic. Like, I and I went by myself because normally my wife goes with me and she keeps me in check, but she was not there. She was not there. There were Panther fans around me, and I was I was allowed to go full ignorant, right? And I did. I did. I would tell you what I did, but my son is asleep, and I don't want to be loud and wake him up. But I'll try to uh, post – uh, my live video into this uh, on, onto my uh, social media for this one, Mac, a.k.a. your boy, right, which is where you're watching me live. But I'll post that in there so you can see my reaction. But the thing I had was um, there was this – there's, a like, a couple of Panther fans behind – and fans, right? I do the air quotes because this lady had no idea what was going on on the Carolina sideline. She had no idea who we had on the field. She didn't know what was going on at all, right? So she's just up there sitting behind me, just saying random names, right? Um, and the thing is, she was sitting there with somebody who has less football knowledge about what's going on than her. So she has the feeling at that moment that she is the expert of football because her company knows less than her. So she's just out there saying random names, like our kicker. Uh, Sly, right? He's a uh, rookie who is kicking in place of our regular kicker, Graham Gano, who got hurt and cannot kick right now. So every time this dude is kicking, I love Graham Gano. I hope he doesn't miss this one like he missed the last one. And in my head, I'm just like, what is she talking about? Like, I'm not going to correct her in front of her friends because that's not my place, you know. But as the game went on, she just kept giving stupid stupid knowledge to this person. And I started feeling bad for the person she was sitting next to. Because, oh, look at this. We got uh, CP, my boy Bobble watching. We got uh, my girl Sonia watching. Holly's watching. Welcome, welcome. Um, appreciate y'all jumping in. Feel free to comment, whatever. Um, but, yeah, so she's just dropping stupid knowledge and just hindering this innocent person from learning proper football and what's going on, right? Um, the one of the things that, that I drew the, drew the line at, uh, our receiver, Curtis Samuel Jr., uh, he was playing very well. Uh, our quarterback was getting on the ball. And she's sitting behind me just talking about, you know, I love Asante Samuel. He's so dope. He's, he's like, I've always liked him ever since we drafted him. And if you don't know football, Asante Samuel is not a wide receiver. Asante Samuel has never played for the Carolina Panthers. Asante Samuel has never... Asante Samuel's not even in the league anymore, right? He was a cornerback. He retired. He is nowhere near football right now. But this lady is sitting here telling this person that is Asante Samuel. And then so I turned around, and I'm just like, yo, that is Curtis Samuel Jr. Uh, Asante Samuel is he, – he used to be in the NFL, but he's not anymore. She's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's why I got him confused because I remember there being an Asante Samuel and all this other stuff, right? And I'm just like – Come on. She's like, oh, I love Christian McCaffrey. He's my favorite. I watched him when he was in, in UCLA, like in college. Lady, this man went to Stanford. Christian McCaffrey had nothing to do with, uh, with UCLA. Like he's beaten UCLA. 
he hasn't played on UCLA. Like, you're just back here giving up nonsense, and it's ridiculous. So I had that going on, right, like the fake fans. But I, I didn't let that, you know, take away from me enjoying the ass whooping that we were giving the Cardinals. But there was one other fan, a uh, Cardinals fan, who was sitting there and was just belligerent from from jump, right? Um, and they, they always seem to find me for some reason. And I think it's because, like, I was sitting by myself with the Panther jersey on with the Cardinals around me and stuff. So um, he's sitting there. And he just starts yelling, right? Just starts, like, he is one of those dudes that go there to uh, tailgate, right? <laughs> he started. My homeboy's like, why you shout me out? And he got excited waving at his phone like I could see him. Appreciate that, man. See, that's the kind of dedication I'm talking to, man. He sees me. He's hyped that I'm up here doing my thing. I appreciate that, Bobble. I appreciate that, man. Keep that energy, bro. Here, I'll wave at you. I see you, baby. I see you. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, like he shows up to the Cal tailgate, whatever, and he gets drunk. Like, why do people do that? Like, if you're going to a football game, you paid money for tickets. You want to go to the game. You want to enjoy the game. You want to watch your team play. But you go there shit faced and you have no idea what's going on. You're just being loud and you're ruining the experience for everybody else around you. Like, he's just yelling, Oh, Cardinals, let's go, Larry Legend. And that was cool. I mean, get excited for your peoples, right? Get excited for your peoples because uh, Larry did score a touchdown. And I was like, the last thing I need is for the Cardinals to go off with this drunk fan behind me, right? Because this is going to be a long day. I probably would have left early or something. But, like, every, he had to yell at everything, man. Like, everything that happened. What are you doing? Get out of here, Panther defender, what it like? He didn't even know the name. He didn't know nothing that was going on. He was just yelling, "Give the ball to Larry!" Like, bro, Larry, Larry Fitzgerald ain't even on the field. Like, your defense is on the field. Your defense is on the field. Why are you being ignorant right now? Let people enjoy the game. Just let us have this, man. Please, can we please have this? Um, <laughs> but it's just—it's always a fan like that. Every time I go to an away game, I've only been to two. But there's always been this drunk dude that just keys in on where I'm at. And he was being, like, super loud, trying to get me to turn to look at him, right? But you know what? I'm not even going to get that. I didn't even get that man the, a moment of my time, man. He was so annoying. The Cardinal fans that were sitting in front of me were looking back at him like, like, where is this man's handler at? Like, who, who is in charge of this child, man-child back here who was just ridiculously drunk and loud for no reason, right? So... Um, he, and he did not get quiet. Normally as the game goes on and they see their team losing, they shut up, but this man did not shut up. He just kept going and finding things to yell about. Um, to the point, like when, after, after we scored like 17 straight points, like we were, we were putting it on them. Like we, we put our, our foot on their throat and it was not going to work out for them. And I think they knew it and they decided to go ahead and start, uh, I like that SpongeBob. <laughs> like I was all on Instagram wilding, man. Uh, you know, like the old. I'm a head on out. So you know, I'm doing some memes. Cardinal fans, whoop, down by 17. I'm a head on out. You know, I did videos. Like where y'all going, man? It's like eight minutes left in the game. Stay cheer for your team. Cheer for your team. Leaving early, man. That was an empty stadium by the end of the game. I felt like I could have went down to the front and shook hands with the Panthers. You know what I'm saying? I probably should have tried that, but. Uh, that was neither here nor there, man. I, I loved it. I loved the game. Um, we won. We got our first win of the season. And on that note, uh, you know, I'll save this for like a sports podcast, but Cam Newton better watch his back. Because Kyle, Kyle Allen, my boy now, that's how you say it. His name is Kyle Allen, but I just make it one word. Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen. That's my boy. Hey, y'all watch out for him. Uh, he did so well that for some reason, now the Panthers are really taking in consideration Cam Newton's injuries and are like, oh, we should let him sit for a while to get better. So Kyle Allen will start next week. You got damn right he's going to start next week. Hitting receivers in stride, not overthrowing six foot seven uh, tight ends. That's what it's all about. <laughs> that is what it is all about. Let me put do not disturb on my phone because now people are messaging me. And it's going to sound all weird on the uh on the actual podcast. 
So I can see comments. I just don't want when people text and then it like vibrates or whatever on the phone or whatnot. But anyway, yep. So that was that. But the best part of my day was the night actually going to see uh, Joe Coy uh, perform live. Uh, he's doing a new tour, the Just Kidding tour, because he's just finished the Coming In Hot tour. I don't know. I don't know if it's a new tour, but he did say he's writing new stuff for a special that he's taping for Netflix in January. So you're getting another Joe Coy Netflix come in January. And I got to experience that with some good friends of mine, uh, Jedi, who just logged on. Welcome, Jedi. Uh, and then Bo, uh, who was one of my instructors. Actually, they were both my instructors when I went through my uh, weapons controller training here in Luke when I came here to TDY in 2009. But uh, now I'm coming back as a grown-up. <laughs> Now I'm coming back as a grown-up, and uh, Jedi actually hooked me up with a spot here to uh, to run through my retirement out here in Phoenix. So good looking out, Jedi. I appreciate you. But um, so if you guys know me, you guys know that um, I have low-key aspirations to do something in in comedy, right? Stand-up comedian, uh, a writer, or like some kind of actor or something. I just want to get my foot in the door because I feel like I'm a pretty funny dude. I've been told that once or twice in my life, uh, and I, I want to see that through to fruition, right? And I actually feel like I'm a funny dude, right? I'm not being cocky. I'm being confident, right? Um, I, I've been known to make people, you know, chuckle once or twice, you know? So I've been known to do that. So now here I am, and it, it, this isn't just for me. So, like, if you guys have a goal, if anyone out there has a goal, a dream, and they aspire to do something, to, to be the best and learn how to excel and, and be the top of the, the tip of the spear in what you want to do. Uh, for me, like comedy, if you go and it, it, it was something about that show. Like, yes, I went and I was entertained. And like this man had me in tears, like my jaw was hurting. This man, he oh, my gosh, man, he he is in the he is in the zone, bro. Like, I don't know why he's not mentioned up there with, like, you know, Kevin Hart and, and like, I mean, I can see Dave Chappelle is, like, up there. But this dude, like, I went, I've been to a live Kevin Hart show, and he's a funny guy, but it was, like, an older show, like, before he was so, I don't know, I don't want to say overexposed, like, because Kevin Hart's everywhere, right? But I was sitting there while laughing, watching Joe Coy and how he is, like, presenting his set his interaction with the fans like he was just like he wasn't he wasn't bigger than the moment you know what i'm saying he was not bigger than the moment uh the the venue that he chose was was small it was intimate it was a round stage um like me and my wife like we paid 90 bucks for our tickets and we were like right there front row next to the stage this dude is just that's probably my bird y'all hear them all in the background. <sighs> they messing up my podcast. Either way, but it was just an amazing thing to see how excited he was to be there, how how real he was, right? Because that was another thing. Like he was telling stories about his life, about people who influenced him, about how it was tough trying to to look for because uh, everybody knows he's half Filipino, but trying to find Filipinos that inspired him. And he told the story about Manny Pacquiao and his first fight with uh, uh, Antonio Barrera and all that stuff. And it, like, the way he mixed his comedy with his real life and his interaction with the fans and all that stuff, even the two dudes who came before him, man. I mean, I was just sitting there. It was like I was taking mental notes, not of their jokes, right? Because I don't want to be... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be like the next Carlos Mencia stealing jokes, right? Because nobody wants that. Um, what I do want is to kind of just sit back and just watch these dudes. Like, you know, I watch Netflix specials and like I watch them. Yes, to be entertained, but I'm just like, you know, how let me see how they interact with the fans. How can I do that? You know, uh, and make it natural, not forced. I don't want to be a carbon copy of these dudes. I want to see what they're doing and then kind of mix what I do into that, right? And it's one of those things where, like, I was just in awe watching this guy, man. I was just in awe watching him because this dude clears out 
you know, theaters and things like that. And to have this small venue where, it, I mean, oh my gosh, like I wish, huh, I wish I could have recorded that and then just play it, right? I wish I could have just recorded that and just played it over and over and watched it like game film, man. Because it, it was, he went on for, he had like a two hour set, right Jedi? Like he had a two hour set. I was expecting him, because I watched Ali Wong and, you know, Kevin Hart and their joints are like, you know, their actual set when they come out is like close to an hour, maybe over an hour. Like this dude was out there. Like his his set started about eight o'clock, little after eight. And we're getting out of there at like 10 o'clock. Bro, he had like a good two hours of, of material, man. And it was, and you could tell like, like some of it was just off the top, the interaction with the fans. Cause he's like, I'm in the middle of writing stuff. I don't have a full thing. So how I'm doing most of these jokes is I'm interacting with you guys. And as I'm talking with you guys, things come up and I'm like, oh, let me tell you this story. And, and then he'll tell it, throw some comedy in there, embellish it a little bit. But it's like truth to it, right? And it was just, it was such an amazing thing. And it really put that thing into perspective for me. He told, the, the biggest thing I got out of that is he was talking about um, hold on real quick. My camera just stopped recording. I don't know why. Huh. That's odd. For some reason, my camera that I'm recording this thing and trying to dub and whatnot, it only records in 20 minutes. I guess because I got the quality all high, like it's a 4K. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Anyway, you guys saw me live, so you guys see what's going on. <coughs> But it was a, uh, it was when he was talking about how kids are super privileged and his child will never know this, that, and the third. And he was like, he's not going to know about going to a Kinko's, trying to print out flyers, trying to put them, <laughs> trying to put them on, uh, put them on cars to, to advertise your show, going out to these shows. Um, you only get three minutes to do your act and all this, the grind like that. And I'm sitting here and, and it realized, right? Cause I'm sitting here like, why ain't I getting enough likes? Why ain't nobody sharing my video? You know, because I ain't doing the work. I just can't post some videos on the internet and expect to be famous the next day. And I know that. But it's a slow process, right? So then um, I was talking to another friend and they're just like, yo, is there any open mic things? I'm like, there's a comedy club up there by Westgate. I don't know if they have open mic things. So that's something I got to check into. But I mean, if it's there, then why not... Uh, why not try it out, right? I mean, I'm sure they give you like five, 10 minutes or something like that. Just go out there, have a little quick uh, five, 10 minute set, see how it does. And um, if you get booed, you get booed. And then that's how you, <laughs> you, uh, you have uh, things where you're just like, you know, well, that didn't work. Let me try a, a, another angle. Let me try something else. Because all these dudes got booed before, man. Joe Coy's been booed before. Uh, these dudes I follow, these cats that... Uh, the real comedians of social media, like Kev on stage, Tony Baker, Doughboy, to hear more. Uh, all them dudes got booed. They told stories about it. Um, Kevin Hart's been booed. Like all the biggest comedians have been booed before, right? And it's because this is starting out. You're trying to figure out what your angle is going to be on certain things, right? So I just have to prepare myself for that. Um, but I know I have tons and tons of stories, man. Tons and tons of stories. And, and material that I can use. I mean, I got three kids, bro. If that ain't at least three comedy specials in itself, I don't know what is. <laughs> Am I right? But um, yeah, it was just it was just amazing to be able to have that moment uh, with my wife. Who you know, I'm looking at her laughing, and I'm I'm all kinds of like joy. I'm like, my, Joe Coy's here. I'm watching a a a, a master at it. You know, at his craft doing this um my wife's having a great time she's been working all these crazy shifts you know that she finally gets some time off we get time off together have a good date night um i got my boys you know jedi and bo back there we're all laughing so now when we go to work tomorrow we got something to talk about like we're gonna talk about this comedy thing and it's it was just a good time all around um and we came home on the way home stopped and got some carne cider burritos and fries ate Shout and knocked out.
and I was on leave today, so I didn't have to wake up and go to work. You can't script a better Sunday than that. Panthers winning, Joe Coy at night, Mexican food for dinner, sleep. <laughs> it gets no better, no better than that. Well, I digress. Last thing I'm going to talk about. Last thing I'm going to talk about. Um, so I come home from the Panthers game, and uh, I'm looking for a, uh, a shirt, an undershirt to wear. Um, for my outfit. So I'm just like, I have no more uh, wife beaters. I think my son might have some. Or, like, we buy the same type of wife beaters. Like, obviously, mine's are bigger because I'm fat. And his is smaller because he's, like, slim. So I'm just thinking, well, maybe doing the laundry, he probably has some of mine up there, right? So anyway, I go upstairs, right? And if you know me, if you've, if you've known me, you, you know my son has been grounded from stuff for probably about as long as you have known me <laughs> like he is not allowed to mess with anything that re that uses electricity unless it is his toothbrush lights or the microwave anything else he needs adult supervision because he gonna do something he ain't supposed to be doing <laughs> it is what it is man he knows it uh everybody in the house knows it he's grounded right he can't do nothing i go upstairs and I'm going to check out to see if he has, you know, some of my wife beaters in his drawer. And I walk past my daughter's room, and she is in there playing on the Wii U. Well, this is the thing. She asked, uh, <laughs> she asked if she can play her Wii U. And I'm just like, well, cool, yeah, you're not grounded, whatever. You can play it. But your brother cannot play it. Kuya cannot play it. Your brother cannot play it. Don't let him play it. She knows that because she just got in trouble a couple weeks ago for letting him watch TV in her room, but he is not allowed to watch TV. She's like, oh, I didn't know he was grounded. I'm like, this man has been grounded for your entire life. Like when you were born, he was grounded for something. And that is that, right? <laughs> just he is not allowed to do anything entertaining. He, like I said, if it requires electricity and it is not his toothbrush, the microwave or turning on a light to read a book, you need adult supervision. So I walk past there, and he is full up using the Wii balance board for, like, the Wii Fit with the Wii things, doing this, standing up on the Wii board. And on the screen of the TV, it's a clown sitting on a ball juggling stuff. And I'm just like, Willie, what are you doing? And he's just like, huh? I was like, what are you doing? And then Novelin turns around to, and that's the part that broke my heart, right? Because I expect this stuff from my son. I expect this from Willie. I don't expect this from my daughter. It was like when, when Caesar was being murdered, <laughs> and he looks at Brutus, <laughs> and he hits him with that, et tu, Brute? <laughs> et tu, Navi? No! No! That was my heart. That was my heart, man. And she was just sitting there like, huh? I'm just like, what, what is happening in this room right now? Like, all of the things that I don't want to be happening are happening in this room. Tell me why. She's like, oh, well, I just uh, wanted him to do the body test. I told him he can do the body test. And I'm just like, that standing on that ball and juggling is not the body test. And even if it was just a body test, you know he ain't supposed to be doing it anyway, right? You ain't supposed to be doing this anyway. So, like, my heart is broken because you're an enabler. You just enabled your, your brother to get in more trouble. And to top it off, I just confront him. Because, like, the, the court, the bottom line, the common denominator is he keeps putting himself in a position to get caught doing stuff he's not supposed to do. So I ask him, I'm just like, Willie, 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 what are you doing in this room playing the Wii? Knowing you're grounded. What are you doing? He looks at me. He was just like, what? I was just doing. The, I was like, I don't, I know what you were doing. He's like, but it's just we fit. I'm like, I know it's we fit. You know how I know it's we fit? Because I bought we fit. <laughs> I know the games in the house. I play video games. I used to be on the we fit when it was all popular. That was my thing. So now I'm just sitting there like, I know what game it is. What I want to know is why you are playing it. 
He's just like, for exercise. <laughs> I looked at him. I was like, what? He said, I'm playing it for exercise, you know, to get fit. <laughs> oh, my God. It was it was. It was a mixture of like disbelief. It was a mixture of 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 anger. It was a mixture of like I wanted to laugh because hold on real quick. <laughs> Cause I was waiting for him to start laughing. I was like is he screwing with me? Like, is this is this the beginning of my son's comedic genius? Because I would like him to have a funny bone. I would like for him to have a sense of humor. Um, and I would like for him to try to get out of something with, with by using his wit, by using some kind of humor, right? <laughs> but he uh, he was serious. Like, he wanted me to buy... The fact that he was playing video games because he wanted to get in shape, right? And I'm just like, you know what? You know what? I would, I would consider buying this. I would consider buying that excuse if, if I walked by and you were doing like the We Fit Yoga, right? <laughs> if we were doing... The We Fit Yoga, and I saw you doing the push-ups to the planks and all that stuff. I would have been like, you can play this mode, right? You can play this mode. This will get you in shape. This will get you toned, whatever. Probably not as well as a real yoga class. But you know what? If you're in the house and you ground it and this is what you want to do, I'll let you do that. I'll let you do We Fit Yoga. Get them planks on. Get in that tree pose, you know? But my guy, you were on the Wii board juggling the Wii nunchucks because on the screen, <laughs> you were in the circus standing on a giant ball juggling bowling pins. What part of the fit game is that? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it. And this is like before, like right before we had to bounce to come to this Joe Coy show. Like it was like, I don't have time to get this anger because I'm trying to have a good time today, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, man. So, I mean, it's like stuff like that, like stuff like that where you're just like, how can you how can you not tell that story? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, he. And for every story like this, I got, I got like, oh my God, racks on racks on racks. <laughs> Sonia's like, fanger, funny anger <laughs> happens in my house on the daily. I'm glad, I'm glad it's just not my house. Uh, Cause I look at things like my son has been caught so many times with his hand in a cookie jar, man. And like his first reaction is to try to lie to get out of it. And the downfall to that is he doesn't think through lies. Like he doesn't pre-plan lies, which he's a terrible liar, which is great because I don't want a professional liar in my house. But like, I want to see some effort. <laughs> I want to see some effort in that joint. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to, you got to at least come up with something where I'm just like, that is a possibility. But all his lies, I boom, shoot them all down. Like he tosses them up. Shoot him down. Well, uh, my teacher said it was supposed to be due tomorrow, but it's not just pow, pow. No, tell me the truth because I'm about to email your teacher right now. <laughs> you know, straight to the chase. Straight to the chase. Tell me the truth, son. Tell me the truth. But, yeah, so that, that was the only downside of yesterday, my son. And that, bro, it, it blew my mind. I want to get fit. I'm like, you could ask me to take you to the gym. You can go outside and run around the block. You can get the basketball and go to the basketball court down there at the park. You can do some push-ups and sit-ups in the house. 
something like that. Oh, my son is up. I told you, try to do this thing when he's asleep. Come here so they can see you. <clears throat> Don't push no buttons. But yeah. Say hi. Say hi. Got a camera there, camera there. Everybody's watching. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll wrap it up on that. But yeah, this is just a bonus episode, so it's <laughs> it's something a bit shorter. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys uh, on the flip side. Uh, I'll post this today. Uh, the scheduled again, the, the scheduled episode always comes out on on Sunday around noon. So that'll be that. <laughs> and uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for whoever tuned in on live. I appreciate it. Um, next time I hope to be more uh, interactive, be able to just sit down and go live and just go off of your comments and just talk about whatever's on there. But um, yeah, as you can see, I'm trying to get more and more sophisticated with this. Um, I got this thing set up where I can call people and have them uh, be guests on the, the podcast and stuff. So Expect that to happen soon, all this other good stuff. My daughter just appeared out of nowhere. You probably saw her walk by too, but you guys take care. Uh, say bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs> you guys take care. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, holla at your boy, man. Take care. <laughs>